These are the seven best tech ETFs you can invest in. We'll break down why these are the top choices based on performance, asset center management, fees, and the exposure they provide to the great companies that are pushing our economy to a future with robots doing the job for us while we watch Netflix and chill. By the way, today I'm focusing 100% on pure tech ETFs. I'm not gonna mention general growth ETFs like UQQ. For that, by the way, I made another video that you can check out later, and then I'm gonna link in the description below. And for European investors, I will also mention European alternatives. My name is Rick, and if you're new here, welcome aboard. You can subscribe to it for more content like this. And now let's jump right into ETF number seven. If you're building a diversified portfolio of the best tech ETFs, ETF number seven might offer an interesting angle by targeting software and service companies. This ETF manages over $7 billion and comes with an expense ratio of 0.41%, meaning you'll pay $41 per year for every $10,000 invested. I'm talking about the iShares Expanded Tech Software Sector ETF, ticker IGV. IGV tracks the performance of the S&P North American Technology Software Index, which is composed of some of the largest and most dynamic software companies in the world. In terms of performance, IGV has delivered consistent growth. 31% in the last year, 112.77% in the last five, meaning 16.3% per year on average, and 467.75% in the last 10, which translates into an impressive average of 18.96% annually. Just for clarity, the orange line you see here is the performance of the S&P 500 in the same time frame, with 185% in 10 years. With IGV, you'll own a piece of 114 top software companies with a strong emphasis on Salesforce, Oracle, Microsoft, ServiceNow, Adobe, and many other companies that I'm sure most of you know. Its top 10 holdings account for 58.55% of the fund, so a strong tilt towards industry leaders while still maintaining diversity across the portfolio. For European investors, there is not a direct alternative for software companies, so you're gonna have to invest in more general tech ETFs like the one that I'm gonna talk about in this video. For our ETF number six, we're diving into a unique and most loved corner of the tech world artificial intelligence. AI has been in everybody's mouth in the past few years, and if it's going to develop as fast as in the past few years, in 10 years' times, we're literally going to live in a future with robots doing our laundry and cooking for us. I'm talking about the Global X Artificial Intelligence and Technology ETF, ticker AIQ. This ETF holds around 84 companies that are leaders in AI, machine learning, and automation. The expense ratio sits at 0.68%, meaning you'll pay $68 annually for every $10,000 invested. Compared to the average of big famous ETFs, it's quite a bit more expensive, that's true. But still, some might argue it is a reasonable price for accessing the best of the best in artificial intelligence. In terms of performance, AIQ has delivered solid returns, with 33.46% in the last year and an average of 15.3% since its inception in 2018. The ETF tracks the Index X Artificial Intelligence and Big Data Index, which includes companies that are using AI and big data technologies in their products and services. The portfolio is heavily weighted toward technology, of course, with 64%, and communication services with 13.8%, with a strong emphasis on companies like ServiceNow, IBM, Oracle, Alibaba, Meta. As you can see, the key players driving the AI revolution. The top 10 holdings account for roughly 33% of the fund, giving it a nice balance between large tech giants and small innovative companies. If you're looking to invest in the future of AI, AIQ is surely one of the best choices, and you just have to accept a higher expense ratio, which hopefully will be well compensated by a greater long-term performance. Now, for European investors, good alternatives are XAIX, the AI in Big Data ETF from Xtrackers, as well as XB0T, the Global X Robotics and Artificial Intelligence ETF. The next ETF is a powerhouse in the semiconductor industry, focusing on one of the most critical sectors of the tech world. If you don't know what semiconductors are, this ETF is all about gaining exposure to the companies that manufacture those small chips powering everything smart that we use, from smartphones to laptops to even big data centers that companies use to collect and save all the data we give them from Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. <laughs> 
you Google image me, you'll see the Canadian dude I stole my identity from. Now, semiconductors play a pivotal role in the growth of AI, cloud computing, and autonomous vehicles. So this fund is a great way to invest in the backbone of technology. I'm talking about the iShares Semiconductor ETF, ticker SOXX. This fund holds 30 of the biggest names in the semiconductor space, including Broadcom, AMD, Nvidia, which alone make up around 25% of the fund's total holdings. Now, it's true that 30 holdings are a quite strong concentration. So if you buy this ETF, you're going to feel kind of like you're a stock picker. But it's true that it gives you a great selection of the best chip makers driving the tech revolution. SOXX manages over 14 billion in assets and has an expense ratio of 0.35%, meaning you'll pay $35 annually for every $10,000 invested. When it comes to performance, SOXX has been unbelievable, with 45% in the last year, 227.66% in the last five, which translates to an average of 27% over the past five years, and 752.9% in the last 10, which you won't believe it, translates to an incredible 24% per year in the last decade. If you had invested $10,000 in SOXX 10 years ago, that investment would be worth today $85,290, showing you just how crazy this sector's growth has been. If you believe in the future of semiconductors and their role in technologies like AI and 5G, SOXX is a great ETF to consider. For European investors, a good alternative is VVSM, the semiconductor USD ETF from Vanek. The next ETF is going to give you exposure to some of the biggest and most innovative companies shaping the future of global tech. So not a single focus on semiconductors or AI, but instead a wide and beautiful mix of everything that makes tech the best sector ever. This fund holds 140 of the largest technology companies in the US market, making it a great option for those who want to invest in the tech sector but don't want the risk of investing in individual stocks. I'm talking about the iShares US Technology ETF, ticker IYW. Like most of the good tech ETFs, five-star Morningstar rating because of the wonderful performance, and for this particular ETF, an expense ratio of 0.39%, meaning you'll pay $39 annually for every $10,000 invested. Again, slightly higher than some competitors, but still reasonable given its focus on high-growth companies. Performance-wise, IYW has consistently delivered strong returns, with 43% in the last year, over 197% in the last five, meaning 24.36% per year for the last five years, and 532% in the last 10 years, which translates to an impressive 20.25% per year in the past decade. If you had invested $10,000 in IYW 10 years ago, that investment would now be worth over $63,000. The fund is heavily weighted towards the biggest players in the tech world, with Apple and Microsoft alone making up more than 31% of the fund's assets. The rest of the portfolio includes other tech giants like Nvidia, Meta, Broadcom, and Google. With IYW, you're looking at a highly concentrated fund focused on large cap tech stocks, which might carry some risk given its rapid growth and high valuation in the tech sector. However, if you believe tech will keep dominating the future's economy, IYW offers a strong way to capitalize on this trend. For European investors, since there is not an equal ETF, I'm going to give you one of the best tech ETFs for European investors, which is QDVE, the S&P 500 Information Technology ETF from iShares. For position number three, we're diving again in the semiconductors industry, and this time with an ETF that features only 26 companies, with approximately $24 billion in assets under management and an expense ratio of 0.35%, which might sound high, but not for the semiconductor industry. I'm talking about the Vanek Semiconductor ETF, ticker SMH. This ETF holds 26 of the largest semiconductor companies, including industry giants like Nvidia, Taiwan Semiconductor, Broadcom, and AMD. Approximately 74% of the fund is concentrated on its top 10 holdings, which is no surprise considering it only has 26 companies. And of course, it gives you significant exposure to the leaders in this sector. When it comes to performance, SMH has been impressive, delivering 68.6% .6 in the last 12 months, 344.66% in the last five years, namely 34.77% per year, 
and 1,098% in the last 10, which translates to an average annual return of 28.19% over the past decade. If you had invested $10,000 in SMH 10 years ago, it would now be worth around $120,000. While the focus is heavily on semiconductors, with around 93% of the portfolio allocated to this industry, you have to keep in mind the cyclical nature of the semiconductor market. Economic downturns can impact demand for chips, which could lead to volatility. So always always be careful with over-concentrated in any single sector. For European investors, the alternative is the same ETF from the same issuer. The ticker is VVSM and it's called the Semiconductor USD ETF from Vanek. My ETF number two is one of the best and largest tech ETFs focused on large cap that include all the different segments of technology. With over $69 billion in assets under management and a cheap expense ratio of just 0.09%, with this ETF, you get all the tech companies from the S&P 500. I'm talking about the Technology Select Sector Spider Fund, ticker XLK that tracks the Technology Select Sector Index. XLK is one of the 11 select sector ETFs from State Street Global Advisors. So basically, SPDR divides the 500 companies of the S&P 500 into 11 sectors and offers an ETF for each one of them. We have Communication Services with XLC, Consumer Discretionary with XLY, Consumer Staples with XLP, and so on. And one of them is the Technology ETF with XLK. The top 10 holdings of XLK are the best tech companies in existence, like Microsoft, Nvidia, Apple, Broadcom, and so on, and have a weight of 66% of the total fund. As for performance, XLK delivered 36.11% in the last 12 months, 189.15% in the last five years, or 23.66% per year, and 527 0.43% in the last 10, which translates to an average annual return of 20.16% over the last decade. If you had invested $10,000 in XLK 10 years ago, it would now be worth around $62,700. Now, XLK and the whole tech sector have been a strong performer historically. As digital transformation accelerates, there's going to be more and more demand for cloud computing, AI, and cybersecurity, and so on. The tech sector, though, as a high valuation right now, and if valuation becomes too stretched, it could lead to volatility. Remember also that technology is cyclical, and while the long-term outlook is positive, economic downturns or shifts in consumer spending could affect performance. To conclude, for European investors, the alternative is SML3, the Technology S&P US Select Sector ETF from Invesco. The last ETF is by far my favorite in the tech sector. It's designed to give you broad exposure to the technology sector, featuring some of the most innovative companies of large, mid and small capitalization. With 317 holdings and a cheap expense ratio of just 0.1%, the ETF is your best choice if you're looking for a diversified way to invest in tech without the hassle of picking individual stocks. I'm talking about the Vanguard Information Technology ETF, ticker VGT. The expense ratio is extremely cheap, as I mentioned, so you notice how the wider the ETF, the cheaper it becomes. VGT weights the holdings based on their market value, while XLK, that we've seen before, uses a so-called modified market capitalization methodology. I tendentially prefer ETFs that weight their holdings purely on market capitalization because there is less room for human or factor error. The main holdings in VGT are industry leaders like Apple, Nvidia, and Microsoft. These three holdings, by the way, already make around 44% of the weight. This concentrated approach means that while VGT can capture the upside of rapid tech growth, it also carries the inherent risks of high valuations and sector volatility. Performance-wise, VGT has a great track record, delivering 40.17% in the last year, 178% in the last five, and a remarkable 538% over the past decade, translating to an average annual return of 20.36%. If you had invested $10,000 in VGT a decade ago, you would not be worth around $63,800. For European investors, unfortunately, there isn't an ETF that includes all tech ETFs like VGT. So I'm gonna suggest to you 
one of the best tech ETFs for European investors, which is QDV, the S&P 500 Information Technology ETF from iShares. The difference is that this European ETF only includes tech companies from the S&P 500, so only large cap ones. Now, VGT, as all tech ETFs, is a risk ETF. This graph represents the price to earning ratio of the technology sector and the benchmark used is XLK, since it represents the tech sector within the S&P 500. The PE ratio is around 41 now, and except for now, the value went over 40 only in the year 2000, right before the whole market crashed, starting the worst decade of the last century, with the technology sector falling down 80% and not getting back to the same value until over 15 years later. So obviously, we all know that technology is going to play a huge role in our future and is most likely going to be the best performing sector in the long term. If you have a lump sum to invest though, I would be careful and not just drop in into the tech sector right now and probably I would just dollar cost average into the sector little by little so that in case of a crash or a huge correction you're not gonna have a shock and sell everything. Nevertheless, I'm a huge fan of technology and my portfolio is also tilted toward technology. So I'm not gonna hide that this sector fascinates me the most. Let me know what are your favorite tech ETFs, if there is something else that you'd have mentioned in the list and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for finance investing videos like this. I wish you a great day guys and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!